friends! It is I, Winther! Back for another session of Dungeons and Dragons, the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. I hope your weekend. Hello! Hello! Welcome! I hope your weekend so far has been wonderful. And um, I hope that for whoever is. Uh, hello! Whoever is joining us live and whoever might be watching this at a later time. Uh, I hope you're having a splendid day. I'm about to uh, join up with the rest of the crew. Let me make sure that they're all ready. Loop. Oh! <laughs> Matt! <laughs> Thank you! Um, <laughs> eight. <laughs> if you think that this is going to give you some kind of advantage, um... On the, on the situation, you're wrong! <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, let's join up with the others. Hello! <coughs> Hello! Hello! Hey, hey. Hello! How's it going, my friends? Everything okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, super excited. I cannot wait. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, Matt, thank you. <laughs> Oh, Thank yeah, you yeah. Uh, for your uh, for your Prime subscription. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I I, w I will not allow myself to be um, to be paid off uh, with, with money. Um, the... <laughs> Buying inspiration, <laughs> please God. Instead, I have a four dexterity. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> D and D is help not me. pay to win. <laughs> not Instead, not. what I had in mind. Uh, is Dennis here? I, I see he's muted. I'm here. Okay, so oh, what yeah. I had in mind for this, uh, and uh, uh, as, a, as a way to gain inspiration, um, I was going to have my players do summaries of the previous sessions up until this point uh, uh, before we begin. And uh, what I was going to do was go uh, in table order, starting from Dennis and counterclockwise, as they are in the, uh, in the Twitch overlay. Uh, so I gave Dennis uh, uh, just one day of warning, and I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is ask you to do uh, to do a brief summary of what we what, what you guys were up to last time." And he said, "Okay, but make sure you can stream uh, my screen sharing on Discord." <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what he's about to do, <laughs> but it's okay. Dennis, it's okay. It's uh, all good. Would you like to uh, give us a brief summary of what happened last time? Sure, sure. Everyone should lower their volume. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a tabletop simulator because I did what I always did back in school when I realized super late that I had a presentation to prep. Um, okay. Yeah. The music is stopped. One second. Let me find the proper... <laughs> Same. Please. All right. Can you all see it? Just give me a moment. I, I, I see it. To... I see the comic sans. Turn this, <laughs> Turn this on. Did you um... make a PowerPoint? <laughs> oh, no. I think it is. Maybe. Hold on. I, I need to find out again how to pop this out. There we go. And uh, move this back over, and then I have to make sure that he shows up on stream. <laughs> you can't just make this the opening one. <laughs> we have to follow this up. And you're starting with Comic Sans PowerPoint. You Hell set a yeah. high bar. <laughs> no kidding. I know. I know. I put it. Don't worry. I did it very low effort on purpose, yeah. <laughs> so it's easy to top. Okay. Okay, well, I also hope is. that nobody takes any offense to what I'm about to recap. Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> oh please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, well, here it is. It's, it's on screen. I don't know what's about to happen. Take it from your Dennis. All right, everyone. Welcome to my session one recap of the Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. I said I only had like one day in preparation <laughs> for this. So, yeah. I obviously wanted to have it a little bit planned, so I built a little structure. But first, I will go <laughs> character <laughs> for the character introductions, since that basically took up half of the last session, and then everything that happened after. That. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's 
character. <laughs> All right, let's start with the first character. Oh no! Number yes. one. <laughs> I like this. Pontifex Vastalus Al Enoch. He is old. He is blue, oh. <laughs> and he uses magic to either A, see what you're thinking, or B, pick things up that he's too old to do by himself. Mm. Also, if you haven't seen his mini, imagine him like this. Just because the beard. <laughs> because... If I start drinking before watching that. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this aside in my own. He does have to cut out the beer because, as far as I understood, he doesn't have any hair at all. <laughs> no. He made a, a point to say that, yes. Oh boy. It's a good thing you can't see the beard on the smooth. white background. <laughs> smooth like a plucked chicken. <laughs> all right, our second character, Tekka. He is a tiefling, but forget everything you know about tieflings because this is new. He likes mm -hmm. the lady of the land, and he's pretty <laughs> good at falling asleep fast and on command. That's, yeah. It's <laughs> 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 oh, just yeah, someone sleeping, I'm sorry, I did it too fast. I'm sorry, without the visual, I can't imagine what sleeping looks like. Go back. I don't, I don't really know how to go back. <laughs> okay. Moment has passed. <laughs> so, wait, maybe it's this? Oh, yeah. I nice. Yeah. There he is. That's Tekka through and through. Oh, sleepy yeah, boy. Which yeah, one's after this being? I appreciate it. He's, I guess you will find out the second which of those two is the Tekka. Alright, the next one is Pip. He is literally a child, 12 years old. He doesn't really speak. And he may or may not be controlled by a rat. <laughs> yeah. So imagine him like this. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Moyer. Did I pronounce it correct? Yeah, yeah. Nice. He's very curious about everything, often starts one thing to immediately get distracted by another thing, and he opened his backpack at least 15 <laughs> times last session. Yeah, I'm yeah. not quite sure what he has in his backpack, but it seems to be very important. That, is, that, that seems pretty much pretty fits accurate. my mental description, yeah. yeah. Like, there's, right. there's a person standing up behind that, you just can't see it. <laughs> That's the size of the backpack. <laughs> All right, just for you, Windsor, this is where I changed the font because this is about my character, Brook <laughs> Serious. For everyone, for everyone who sees the VOD later on, they should pause the video right here because this is a whole description. <laughs> but, <laughs> but all you need to know is basically that Brook is a seven feet five tall furbrook with ginger fur and very pale skin. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right, yeah. let's get to the second part, to everything that happened after the character introduction. Once we got done and introduced everyone, we found out that we're all looking for the same person, Jamuel Fleetfoot. So we decided to climb down a rope into a cave, and in that cave was a room with a creature that immediately ran. A bed and a mystery door. Oh, and the statue of the Lady of the Land, I just added this in later, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> this might be important, so I didn't want to leave it out. Mm -hmm. Tekka sleeps to solve the door puzzle, and while sleeping goes into like another dream world dimension, but we're still able to communicate with some of the <laughs> marbles that we found at the statue of the Lady of the Land. <clears throat> then we go into the next room, where we find a book where the book claims to be Jamil Fleetfoot. Yes, we did find him in session one. Jamil <laughs> says the danger is ahead, so Tekka and Brooks this time go to sleep into the dream world. All of us fight and defeat shadow figures, then go into the next room, and that's where we left off. All in all, this was a pretty good session, and it's definitely Dennis approved. <laughs> <laughs> bravo! Bravo! I am. Oh, God. Who's, who's after? Oh, it's I got to do this next week. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, Matt, to get out. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> let me notify my cinematography team. Yeah. <laughs> establish a budget. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write an opera. Are you. <laughs> oh, do whatever you want to do. Just don't lay, make it too high in five weeks because then I'm. There again, I have to do it again. Yeah, we need we need room to build up. Over we have to escalate this you every single. You started so high. You started. 
This is not a low effort casual D and D game. <laughs> the most yeah. important I mean, aspect is our recaps. Our recap game is going to be you, ridiculous. If we keep escalating with every session on the recaps, soon enough we will need to start a Kickstarter for an animated series just for the recaps. <laughs> with That's enough diverse. Twitch primes, we too can have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice, nice uh, little plug you managed to slip in there. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well subscribe done, to Wintermaw. <laughs> true, true. Subscribe to Wintermaw. Here's your Twitch primes. <laughs> <laughs> We're so close to having a, 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 a movie budget. <laughs> oh, that, that went, yeah, that went beyond expectations. <laughs> even, even... <laughs> <laughs> Even though I Way knew you down. were gonna do some kind of presentation, it was... Oh, oh yeah, alright, well, in uh, in that case, um, here's your reward. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an inspiration point. Ooh, do I get um, to roll that manually? Yes, you get to roll this one. Uh, it Basically, whenever you do any kind of roll that requires a, a d20, so a save, a check, an attack, um, after you roll, you can decide to. Uh, after you roll and after you see the result, you can decide to um, roll this one in addition, and it becomes sort of like advantage. And you can toss this one in as well. All right. I'm assuming this is only good for today. Uh, uh, until you use it. Ooh. Like they don't stack. So if like five oh. sessions from now it's your turn again <laughs> to keep the summary, you can't hoard them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> got it. Got it. We'll use okay. it for something good. Um, compared from last time I've given you your nat 20, nat 1 counters, Dennis had written down how many he had rolled, but I didn't go back <coughs> to check on all of you. Um, perhaps I might do it at a later time, but for now they all start at zero. <clears throat> I think uh, your dice the only should one. be okay. fixed. It might have been the only one. Um, okay. The Current situation is that after you've gone beyond the door, uh, you, uh, Tekka was still dreaming. He was still in a dream world, but you took his body with you. So once you're on the other side of the door and you're faced with the other staircase that uh, uh, just goes spiraling down and around, um, is Tekka going to try to, like, wake up? Oh... Um, so, it, Tekka's body is still in someone's arms, right? Uh, Talix had taken him, I, I thought I said that I set him down on the other side of the door. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, in that case, Tekka will definitely try, attempt to wake up, at least. Lay where his body is. Okay, you join up with your body, and you open your eyes, and you are safely awake back, uh, uh with your companions. Welcome back. Hmm. Thank you. Everyone well? I guess. Professor, you... How are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Matt? <laughs> okay, Matt? He's gone. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hello. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> My, my, my mistake. Hmm. We hear you. Yeah, okay, I, sorry, I, uh, what? I, how are you holding up? Well, I, I could have done better. But it shouldn't pose any form of problem. I will just oh. keep my distance in the future, perhaps. Curiosity is not the way to proceed this time. <clears throat> I can At take the lead next time. If you feel like it, otherwise let me go ahead. And as long as you have my bags, I should be fine. We at least you can take the lead on. next time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or or Squeak could take the lead. Now hold on there. <laughs> the, uh, Jamie said the next room is pretty dangerous, so uh, I'm not going to put my neck on the line for you. That's preposterous. 
Just a quick question for the DM. Uh, Brooke took damage while he was in the dream world. Could we, from out here, see any of that? Like, does his, did his wounds carry over to his body? Yes. Do we notice? Mm. In fact, it's kind of, it's, <clears throat> it's sort of like backwards. He took damage in a dream world, but like his, his essence in a dream world didn't look damaged. And instead his body on the bed um, had wounds open up. Hmm. Uh, if anyone's seriously hurt, I can, you know, offer a bit of help. I, I can mean, heal you. <laughs> all right, go ahead. And I hold up my left hand where you can see that parts of the cloth are now sliced open with um, <clears throat> blood dripping out. All right. And Talix also, will once um... again take out... Oh. Uh, don't mind me. In the meanwhile, I'm just going to temporarily blind all of you. Uh, oh, well, you... I... Oh, wait, you need to roll your dice. Okay, <clears throat> you do that first. Dice. Dang it, I okay. was going to do that during the roleplay and I missed it! All right. Uh, Talix is going to take out his uh, little piece of amber, which I described last session as an orb for some reason. I mean, it is a kind of yellow spherical in shape, but maybe a little rough, not too... Uh, not too polished down or anything. And inside there is a little leaf. And it will begin to glow as I say a little prayer. And I will lay hands on Brook. And. Oh, wait, I need to roll on this. So. There we go. Let's see. You heal eight points. That's perfect. <laughs> Good as new. So it is. <clears throat> I'm impressed. That's quite some nice magic. Divine, uh, I assume? Of course, yeah. That's fucking off. I, uh... Partially thanks to the professor here, I've kind of, uh, discovered my connection with her and well, that's why I'm where I am now, so... Oh, well, the next time you connect to her, tell her my thanks. Of course. Let us move. Tide is approaching. Right, right. All right, I would take the lead then. Holding my sword out in front of me, which is now still glowing. Can you all see <clears throat> this half of the area? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, hey, and we have a raid see, like, going a big on. Black obscured one. Rondorf, what? Oh, thank nice. you. And uh, welcome, everyone. <laughs> welcome. Um, okay. Uh, Brooke, you're taking the lead, and you're going down the, the staircase. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> like the previous one so far, it sort of goes uh, in, uh, in a circle. You take a turn and you take another turn and another one until based on your sense of directions, you can tell that once again, you have gone straight down one floor from where, from where you were before. Um, and you open a door and you walk down the final hallway. And as you step uh, uh, towards this area, um, Despite the fact that you know, uh, almost for a fact, that you are beneath the previous area, and this should also be another square room, um, what, what you find yourself in seems to be smaller. And so you make the assumption that beyond the wall that is uh, merely 20 feet ahead of you, there's probably another area. Um, right now you can, not only do you not see it, but the wall in front of you doesn't seem to have any doors, any ways through. Uh, all you see in here in this uh, uh, small space is uh, uh, yet another bed covered in dust and vines. Just another invitation to sleep in a place where normally you would rather not. Position your um, tokens over here. Right. If I see that the room is smaller this time, could I go to the wall and knock on the wall and see how the sound sounds? Yes. Uh, yes, go right ahead. You can roll a perception check. Or make the investigation, actually. Ooh. Investigation. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
the wall feels pretty solid uh, based on the sound that you hear from your knocking. Uh, it's thick. Um, there is definitely more than just a few inches of stone uh, separating you from whatever is behind, but you do feel like the dull noise sort of like echoes on the other side. So there is something, but it, it doesn't feel like um, there is any emptiness in the wall itself. And you just walk from like one side of the room to the other, just sort of knocking here and there and here and there. And uh, uh, the, the only place where you feel like the noise is slightly different is in this area. Oh, that doesn't show, does it? Uh, ah, good <coughs> enough. On this spot on the wall. Oh, that's ugly. Well, in the middle of this. Alright. When you say different, do you mean like more hollow or just um, like there would be different material? Like there's different material. Huh. Alright, I would stand in front of it, keep knocking at different spots. It feels centering. like... Uh... Um, there's a whole area that reaches up like almost six feet where the sound is just uh, ever so slightly different. Well, seeing what we had to do last time, and there is no door, this part of the wall, and I um, hover my hand over the part that sounds different, at least from knocking at it. The material seems to be different, so if there is some more magic going on, it'll probably be there in the dream world again. Mm -hmm. Well, if our experiences in the previous room are to set precedent, the magic is almost assured. It looks like we'll have to be comfortable more than once. Is Maybe is there another? Is there another insc ins inscription? Inscription? Let's yeah. Let's take a quick look around. <clears throat> the five of you just split up real quick, and uh, you take a look around. There's some rubble on the ground, <clears throat> and you make sure that. Uh, um, to move aside any pebbles that might be in the way of something, but besides the bad and the invasive plants that have broken into this room, there isn't really anything. This one... It might need to be all of us, you think? Possible. We should. Can you look at the book? Maybe Jamil knows. Remind something when we, I don't know, maybe he remembers more in this room. I think Pontifex is the one carrying the book. Uh, no. That sounds right to me, because Talix was the last person to have it. Uh... But I gave it to Pontifex after uh, taking Taika. Yeah, that are was able... it. <clears throat> Just a yeah, second, yeah. are you able to see actually this part of the room and the bed and such? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see everything but the wall on... The... Okay, yeah, no, that's this good, that's good. Is... Okay. Um, that's good enough. Uh, when I am doing this, <clears throat> it doesn't really show up. <clears throat> yeah, it's good as I'm it's guessing there. part of the wall is in there, and that's why it's yep. hidden. So you open that's the book. It. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll open the book and then kind of hold it out to, like, into the middle of the room with that mage hand again. Um, just kind of specially float the book so that everyone can see it and he doesn't have to be crowded. And uh, what are you asking? Uh, I think we're just seeing if Jamil has any insight on this. Like, uh, uh, did you anything? perhaps visit this room? Is there anything more to this? You recall having to sleep uh, multiple people? Oh, it's happening again. <clears throat> He uh, 
Claims there are two rooms. <clears throat> well, this one and the other, and then the one on the other side of the door, right? It seems he failed to remember a lot of things. Well, perhaps uh, one of us can, perhaps our quick sleeper here can uh, be a scout of some sort. Perhaps if, if... we should all sleep. Uh, I am remiss to have us all be so vulnerable in this place. Perhaps someone to stand guard, to watch. Perhaps, uh, maybe myself. Maybe I will stay behind with uh, this Jamuel. And if he has any form of insight, I can explain it all to you. I believe these marbles allow us to communicate between all this realm and the other. That's reasonable. I'm not completely sure I'll be able to do this, but... I have to admit, I'm a bit curious. <laughs> this is sort of... Well, it reminds me of something I've... Of a letter I've read from my father a long time ago. Oh? Really? Well... Vaguely. Not, not really, it's just... Something about... We seem to be moving somewhere without... without moving. It's something that, uh... Well, have you seen anything like this in your studies, Professor? Uh, no. Uh, the research I've performed, uh, along with Aaron, of course, uh, never uh, had anything lending to uh, traversing between this world and the one of dreams about moving without moving on no, none of this is uh... is this what uh, dreams are normally like no I couldn't tell you I don't really remember mine you don't remember yours either I mean you know maybe in the moment after waking up oh. but uh, when okay, you've been around you... for this long uh, things that are not of importance to conveniently vacate your mind to make room for things that are. Well, I can't speak for Tekka, but that dream world definitely... I don't know, except for being a bit blurry, everything, or certain parts, it feels more real than a dream. If that helps you, Telix. Well... I'd like to try. My curiosity is, of course, piqued of you uh, having experiences in the dream world and them being reflected onto your physical form. I am, of course, curious, and it may be swaying me to want to stay behind to perhaps observe all of you whilst you sleep. Well, perhaps I else. will uh, participate in the next one. Okay. How about the rest of you? Are the rest of you in? I will stay here for now and search. Huh. Uh, Brooke? Pip? I mean, it already took me a while to fall asleep last time, but sure, let's give it a try. Pip shakes his head. All right. All right. You and me. So Talix and Brooke are the ones who have been chosen to uh, go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, who's taking the bed? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also got to sleep. <laughs> Brooke, you can, Brooke, you can have the bed. I'll just uh, nestle up against the wall here. I've had the comfort of the bed before, and it's a bit small for me, so go ahead. Uh... Oh. <laughs> is, it, is it is it like stinky um yeah like the previous rooms uh it, it's doesn't smell too good mm. 
Brook, I insist you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Just, uh, yeah, uh, oh, 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 sit, oops, oops. sit against the wall and maybe try I'm to I'm zoomed away. in. I can't see. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Tell me when I can zoom out again. Yeah. All right. Well, good enough. All right. So yeah, Talix is just gonna prop against the wall and like pull his hat down over his eyes and try to sleep. Though, I'm not okay. sure it'll come so easily. Easily. For for the two of you who are uh, not as fast at uh, falling asleep, uh, it's going to be a good like 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, um, but there there comes a very uh, distinct moment at Alex where you feel yourself falling they just literally falling back uh, and you're, you're not quite sure if you just um, like slid off the wall and just fell on the side but you actually fell backwards and uh, um, when you when you when you uh, pull yourself up and, and you look around you realize you moved through the wall uh, where there is now just an open passageway and you went through it, but you can see your own body still on the other side of it. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Am, am I awake are. as well? Uh, and yeah, Brooke, eventually. Yeah. There we go. I need to lift this. There we go. Let me just also, since I'm at it, uh, do this. Excellent. You said I'm also waking up in that room again? Uh, you're over here. Okay. You are on this side. Um, you just pull, uh, you like sit up on the bed, but your body is still there. You look back and your body's just sleeping, but you're ready to go around. And from where you are, you don't really see, um, you don't see the rest, you only see Talix. Huh. You only see your own body, and then the, the form of Talix. Is there still, like, part of the wall? Uh, part of or the is wall just... here is gone. Okay. And... Over there, it's also... Oh! <laughs> there is nothing uh, different on this side of the wall. Just this side. Mm -hmm. Is everything okay in there, Talix? I've, I've done it. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, if I'm to understand correctly, if I... I'm asking out loud. If I touch my own body, I I wake up? Is that how it worked? Yes. Oh. This is so bizarre. Can the others hear us? Um, yep, the, through the power of the stones that you picked up in the very first area, everything you're saying out loud uh, can be heard by the others, and the other way around. We can. Alright, just so you have a vague image. Funnily enough, there is no entrance on the left side of the wall, but where Talix went to sleep, there is now an opening. Um, as and... for you, Talix, as you are... Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. Can you finish your sentence? Nope, I mean, oh. <laughs> and he's now inside the room. <laughs> um, Brooke, you're free to follow whenever. You're uh, tall enough that you actually have to lean forward a little bit to go through this entrance. But uh, you can. Oh, uh, Brooke, you're, since you're on this side, you would see that there are two um, lines on either side of this entrance way. One on the left, one on the right. And one of them is glowing with a blue light. Which one? The right the one? The one on the one? left. <clears throat> and there are two lines on the entrance, basically to the left and to the right of where Felix sleeps and the left one is glowing blue. Wait, hold on, explain this more clearly. There is a hole in the wall where yes. he is asleep? Yes. And on either side of the hole, there is a single line and the left one is glowing blue. Exactly. Uh, uh, Talix. While he's describing this, Pontifex is he's pulled out that like, uh, like inkwell pen, uh, little magical thing from the orb, and is uh, is scrawling on the wall and trying to to duplicate this so that the 
us in the corporeal realm can see this. So okay. He's drawing lines on the wall, and one of them is blue, and one mm -hmm. of them is black. Yeah, and, and Brooke can see that he got it like at a slightly different height, but otherwise, uh, um, that's that's about right. Talek says for you who um, who have gone through on the other side, uh, you are welcomed by another set of buttons on a square grid, sort of like the ones you saw in the first area, but each of these buttons is branded with a different symbol, though none of the symbols really mean anything to you. On a pillar to your right, you see five such symbols etched into the stone, and lastly, there is a lever next to the entrance where you just fell through, and uh, a door on the opposite side. I believe I found a puzzle. Uh, can I see a layout of the symbols and what the symbols on the pillar are? Yep. Now let's hope that uh, this works correctly. But if I were to put this here, is it only uh, Dennis and Jason who can see this? I can see it. I, I do see it. I can't uh, see the it. other stone. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, and if I pull awesome. this out, only only Dennis and Jason see it. I do see it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> this face. So it's going to be an information okay. puzzle. Look at things from the perspective of where Austin is sitting on the table. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, this side is going to be the top. Your this side is the, is the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the grid with the buttons on it, and this is what you see on the pillar. All right, horizontally. Okay. If I go inside to look at it and see the lever, I'm telling. Should I pull this lever? Maybe I, something. I have a feeling you shouldn't pull that lever until you're confident we know that we've solved this. Oh, sure. It seems... Well... I see at least one matching symbol. Is there anything you can communicate to us about the puzzle? Perhaps we can put our heads together. Well, these are some interesting symbols. Uh, I, they're on a 4x4 four four grid. And... Uh, there's symbols unlike anything I've seen before. Each one's unique. One of them matches one of the symbols I can see on this pillar. But the other four symbols on this pillar aren't seen anywhere on here. Brooke, do you remember where you saw, where you felt that weird section in the wall? Maybe you could check it out before. Sure, I will. Just in case. I'll stumble back and mm -hmm. I don't know touch it yeah uh, you touch it you knock on it uh, you're feeling the same kind of uh, uh, difference in noise that you felt before can't go through nope I can't go through well I guess we should start by pressing the symbol that matches okay you can use your uh, draw tool to like color in uh, the things that you press in. These are the, the kind of buttons that just like uh, they stick in for a moment when you press them. Actually, do it like here. A, I'll uh, I'll a do it. Or whatever you want. I want I wanted to do so we can still see the symbol in case. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, uh, well. Good, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good way. Uh, so you press it in, and you wait, uh, uh, just waiting for, like, some kind of noise or some kind of confirmation anything happened. But after about 15 seconds, the button just pops back up. Well, none of these other symbols match, and they're all so... I mean, I could try to describe sort of what they looked like, but... We will be here for a while. Uh, is there anything on your side? I don't know. We already checked it, but there's nothing you can press, right? 
That's why I saw we should try out the lever. Maybe they can come inside. All right, I'll 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 press it and then we can pull the lever and see what happens. Okay. But I feel like uh, there's more information here. It should mean something. Uh, Brooke, what are you doing in the, in the meanwhile? Are you going back to him or are you staying outside? Uh -oh. I guess. <laughs> 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 you know, Front flip into the room. <laughs> there is a button on the top right. Uh, there is a lift height. And if you click on that and you pull the, the slider up, you will be lifting your tokens higher up. Or you, you can clear the wall. Or you can around. keep running over everybody else if you want. I'll try. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you pull, you push the button, I'll pull the lever. All right. How bad can it be? All right, everyone, keep your eyes peeled in case something happens. Okay, Talix, you push the button, and when it's pressed in, uh, Brooke, you pull the lever. Um, and before your eyes, the entryway that you just walked through closes behind you. It's like stone Whoa. is reforming, uh, locking you inside of the room. But as for everybody else who is awake on the other side, you see the spot that Brooke has been knocking onto earlier uh, open up. Oh, Talix oh, that did strong. something. Help, 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 help. <laughs> No, no, I think it's okay. Uh, you've opened a, a hole in the wall on the other side. Well, our hole is closed now, so we can't get back out. I'm going to remove this wall. Oop, for ease. All right, I suppose it's up to you to do the other half. And I'm going to also just remove this fog of war. It's not really needed anymore. Oop. We just found the one matching symbol. I suppose you could do something similar. Hmm. Understood. What? <laughs> That's there cool. Oh, I oh didn't. no! Oh no! I didn't realize you would have that kind of power. What? <laughs> it's time to grief our <laughs> I can't do it. I disabled it. It's okay. It's a thing you can do once you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I create matter at will? <laughs> Tekka, Pip, and uh, Pontifex, they're all stepping into the, this room. Mm -hmm. sure. you, um, you carefully move over the rubble uh, and find yourselves in a room with uh, a, a grid of buttons, each with a symbol on them, and a series of symbols on the pillar on the opposite side. I'm going to kidnap your minis for just a moment oh. <laughs> and clear this area for all of you to see. There we go. If it helps in any way, the symbol that we could find is like a backward C, but in the middle of a C is like a line from um, top to bottom, not touching the C. I, I just need everybody's feedback, just to make sure. Neither Matt, uh, no, 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 not Matt. Neither Dennis nor Jason can see this bag. Yeah. But the can. other three can? I see it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Ooh. And again, um, the part towards the DM screen is the top. Mm. I have an idea. Squeak, go sleep. What? I'm not tired. Come on, go sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Pip, uh, sort of like puts Squeak down on the ground and Squeak begrudgingly goes to scurry towards the bed and then crawls up right next to Brooke. Okay. While Squeak goes to sleep. Uh, what would the rest of you like to do? Uh, are these symbols legible by any of us, or is this actual just gibberish? It's gibberish to all of you. Oh, I see what you're talking about. I don't recognize any of these. Hey. Uh, you said there was a single symbol yes. that matched? 
From the pillar, yeah. Right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we also have a matching symbol. Uh, only one. Uh, you said it was like a backwards C with a vertical line going through it? Well, it's inside the C. It's not going through, it's just inside the C. Right. Um, I'd almost say it looks more like a D, but that's just me. Sure, it could look like a D, that is actually true. <laughs> like a stylized D. <laughs> uh, uh, Tekka takes his quarterstaff and he points to uh, to three of the symbols. These are the same. Uh, what? You may use your uh, drawing tool on the table, mm -hmm. so um, you can mark what you're pointing at, yeah. Oh. What do you oh. mean they're the same? I see. No, he is right. There are matching symbols of these. We have three matching symbols on our board. Are you certain you only have one? It's possible that only one of us was meant to come through on this side. And, and the we rest. have a 4x4 four four grid of symbols, and then we have a 5-wide horizontal line of symbols. And we three of the symbols on the 5 line uh, have a duplicate in the 4x4 four four grid. Press all the matching ones. We only had one, but I think that's some inclination of how many people we were expected to bring through. If it's any meaning at all, it could just be... Chance. Okay, I can't sure. See the image. I have to relock. Yeah. Oh no. Pawn effects will use his uh his many digits. <laughs> press these. I call it the and pull the lever. With they are the... pressed. Uh, do you see below the cursor tool? Yeah. Okay, I got it. And um, uh, this one. Okay. You press in uh, the three buttons simultaneously and you wait. And after about 15 seconds, they pop back out. Wait, and do I you have a lever? Them and they popped. Do you have a lever? You guys do we have a lever? don't. Oh. There is no lever. All right, let us know next time. Uh, we'll we'll pull the lever on our, on our side and see what happens. You press the buttons okay. and you pull the they lever. Are um... You don't notice anything happening. <sighs> How do the two symbols look that aren't on your 4x4 grid? You mean on the 5 wide? Yeah. So our matching symbols are the left, the center, and the far right. So then the one on the center left... Uh, well, how to describe this? <laughs> um, there's like a capitalized T that is longer on the right side of the top. It is sitting on a small horizontal line at the bottom of it. It looks and like hanging a noose. from the right line. Yes, yes. It looks like a hangman. <laughs> we yes. have that one. Oh. Okay, that is the center left. And then the one on the center right is like a... These are difficult to describe. Uh, it's like a upside down sailboat? I uh, suppose? Uh, a flat horizontal line at top. On the left is a short vertical line. And on the right is a swooping line that goes from the, the right end of the top horizontal line and swoops down to the bottom left. We have it. And there's a it. gap. Yes. You have both? Yes. All right, here are our missing symbols. There's one that looks like a fishing hook. Uh, or if you could imagine that in our language, there was something called a J. It looks just like it. This is like a J that is uh, Angled crooked? slightly. Angled, yes. Okay, yeah, we have one. All right, there's uh, 
there's something that's kind of like a bathtub or a... <laughs> but, how would you describe this? I, I mean, it would be... I would describe it as like an N, but the second zigzag at the bottom is just straight. And there's maybe a like butt a, to the right. Maybe is like a watering like a, can. Like a fat N with like a dot to the right of it? Yes. Yes, booyah. We got it. With an arm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, with an like a little bit. <laughs> and then something that looks just like a G with an extra line on the top. A G with an extra line. A capital this? G. Uh, like a G or a J? Kind of uh, stylized? Or a, or a backwards J, maybe, yeah. Sure, yeah. I, th I think we have one. Uh, our friend Pip here seems to have found it. Pip telepathically says to Squeak, are you asleep yet? <laughs> <laughs> Squeak. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're solving it without us. I, I was under the impression that Faye, I was under the impression that Faye don't sleep. Or do I have that wrong? I actually don't know. <laughs> Also, you didn't hear it. That was just between Pip and Squeak. Oh, okay. That wasn't through the stone. All right. Nope. Okay. Right. Get, uh, get Squeak uh, the marble. There's one, one more symbol. Uh, it's something like a Z, a backwards Z with a... Uh, or maybe... So... The primary line is... Uh, it, it's from top left to bottom right, sort of swoop, and then a line on top. I believe we only have one symbol right. with a swoop. A, <laughs> a horizontal line at the top, a swoop from top left to bottom right, and then midway through that, a swoop to the bottom left. <laughs> yes. Does it look like a wishbone with a hat? <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's exactly what it is. Oh, very observable. Yes, a wishbone with a hat. So oh, between... Like so now between our two panels, we have all ten symbols accounted for seven on your panel and three on ours. Is that correct? Uh, yes, three symbols that are ours and four symbols that are yours for a total of seven. Yes. All right. We'll press all of them at once and uh, pull the lever. Brooke, are you ready? I'm, I'm ready to pull the lever. I'm glad Nothing. this puzzle ended up being a lot more interesting than, uh, than it looked at first. This was fun. Okay, um, so to, to, to make it clear, on the on the left side here, uh, Team Blue, uh, you're yeah. pressing all the buttons so that you have made a, an outline around and the line beneath? Yeah, okay. uh, the, the outlined ones are ours and the ones with yeah. the underline are theirs. And, and I guess you're pushing, pushing all of them. them. All right, yeah. Uh, you Same push here. in all these buttons. Uh, and you also have Brooke pulling the lever, right? Yeah. yeah after, pull the lever, after, Brooke. After, I'm pulling the lever. <laughs> and you pull it, uh, and you guys wait, and nothing happens. And the buttons pop back out. Did, did you pull it? We did. We did pull it. Wait, perhaps we should only... Yes, the perhaps other we should sides. just do one side at a time. Okay. Uh... Let us do your side. Uh, you're the one with the lever. Perhaps we should do our side first. Yeah, let's go so ahead. So we need you to press the hangman and the the swoopy upside down sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see what and you mean. Then, and then we'll press our uh, our three that we have, the the ones that I have squared. Yeah, so we'll press the two that come from their side. Okay. Uh, you do that. Nothing happens. Maybe do the ones that are only on their side. Okay. And I'll press the four that are underlined. And we'll press... I'm going to go ahead and press the two that are from the other side. Okay. So only the ones that come from the other side. Nothing happens. Okay. And, uh, do we see a door? Do we see the door here? Uh, yeah, there is a door there. I walk up and try to pull open the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The door is closed. 
Okay. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I had an aneurysm. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, let's just, for brevity, we, there are different uh, types of things we can try. We can try just doing the symbols from our side on their side without us doing the ones from their side on our side. Yeah. So let's uh, let's try with with just us pressing the four that are on your side. So like the bent J, the the N thing, the Z swoopy. With hat. Yeah, the wishbone with the hat and the G thing. <laughs> we'll press yeah. all four of those and none of ours, and then you guys just press the one that you have. All right. Yeah, we'll try that. Okay. Nothing comes from that. Can okay. I try pulling the door well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, in between attempts, you always try to pull the door open, so I'll just take right. that for granted from now okay. on. And there was no other inscriptions anywhere else, so... Uh, I mean, we'll just try pressing where it's only the four from our side on their side. And Sorry, else. maybe, just, just so I'm understanding this, all these symbols and stuff are on this pillar thing, right? Yes. Uh, and it, like the grid is like above, and the horizontal thing is below it. Uh, yeah, the the, the the grid with the buttons is on the wall opposite from the pillar. Hmm. Okay. And the pillar is the thing that has the five, the five just yeah. the five symbols. Okay. <clears throat> and then there's, I guess, there, there's the two lines on either side of the door, and one of them was blue. Uh, well, I yeah. guess neither of you can see it because your door is shut. Do you think it... No, we can't see it, but do you think it potentially could matter in what order we do it? Not pressing them all at the same time, but pressing oh, them sure. over each other? Oh, okay. Uh, you only have two of our symbols, so perhaps we press them in order? It will be simpler if you just do two. So. Okay. Uh, on your side, it'll be one of ours, and then on your side is the noose, and then us again, and then the sailboat, and then us again. So I think we'll do in that order. We'll press these five in that order. All right. Okay. Uh, Taika, what are you up to in the meanwhile? Uh, I think Taika doesn't really comprehend all of this. So I think Tekaz went back to this room and is investigating the grass that is grown over here. Okay. Uh, it's just like the one that had, the, that had broken into the previous area and yet collected some samples of it. Uh, Tekka will specifically look for any insects or bugs in this room. Okay. Roll a uh, survival check. All right. Uh, the rest of you... Regardless of the order you press buttons in, and whether you alternate in between the rooms, uh, you make no progress. Squeak, are you asleep yet? Uh, Squeak is asleep. Yeah, no thanks to you. <laughs> Squeak is going to see if he can go through into the okay. other side. Squeak can see that there are two lines next to the doorways, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, both of them glowing, and the the entryway is closed. Ah. Uh, oh. My. God. I went to sleep for no freaking reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Whatever godforsaken imbeciles built this place decided only two people could go in that room. Oh, boy. Uh, Guess I'll just wake up now. Ah, <laughs> uh, Squeak wakes up and uh, returns to the room where Pip and Pontifex are. And being a rat with not much to do, he starts to just... Uh, poking around to see if there's perhaps some like hole in the walls so he could like slip through <laughs> um and uh eventually as he like makes his way through some of the rubble that's in one corner of the room uh he can see that partially covered uh, um by the rubble there is an inscription on the wall that uh, oh. uh pip hey i found a clue 
<laughs> the gods are showing mercy on us. <laughs> Can I read it? Is it um, in a language read? that I understand? Mm, only a few words what? here and there. <laughs> what? What? What did you say? <laughs> I can read! Sorry, what? squeak I mean. Squeak I mean. The rats! <laughs> Uh, sorry, I mixed your names up. <laughs> yes, Pip can read. I miss what, what you said with that. Uh, only a few words here and there. It's like before. Um, it's uh, some ancient language that uh, each of you can pick up on a little bit, including Squeak. So um, there is, uh, including Squeak, three of you. If you get Tekka, there's going to be a fourth one. And you all sure. can like put your heads together to try to decipher as many words as you can. Um, what so if we, we press all of the buttons in like a Fibonacci sequence? <laughs> 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 Professor, I'm convinced I, I these buttons your are part of the please. solution. What is a Fibonacci? I, what? <laughs> what language is that? <laughs> He's a it. pompous old half elf from Nazradora. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, two, oh, three, four. Heard. One moment. So here are the words that, uh, for the ones who are awake, you decipher. Each side. See. Five symbols. Other room. Each side C5 symbols other room. Well, if I weren't cut off from my from my body, I could maybe help over there, but it's okay. Um perhaps we should only press the ones from the other room. Wait, did we already try that? Well, well hold on. Maybe maybe our rooms are our grids and have some symbols in common. That we're not going for. Uh, what, uh, maybe there is a simple one. Uh, there is a single horizontal line. Oh. Yep. Yes, we have it. Oh. Uh, I, <laughs> let me, let me circle some shit. Oh yeah, new color. Okay, yeah. Okay, there's a single horizontal line. Uh, there is a capital T with a horizontal line straight through the middle. Uh, it's like a mirrored F. I, I don't think so. Okay, uh, uh. Is another simple. Uh, it is uh, looks like a lightning bolt. We have a couple that could fit that description. Uh, There's a hook it... with an eyebrow. What? There's a hook with an eyebrow. <laughs> I was talking about this one. Any points? Oh. <laughs> Maybe starting simple, and, right. and then we can uh, go into obscure symbols like hooks with like, eyebrows. Is it sort of like the number three, but skinny? Uh, yes, it's like a jagged three. Okay, I, I think we have it. Okay, and the, uh, on that tape same Tape room vein? with a mole. <laughs> <laughs> that is a uh, tape room with a mole. Uh, it is like the, let, uh, the number three with a J coming from the end of it at the bottom and a dot to the right. Yes, we have it. Okay. Simple enough. Uh, there is a capital M. This is a, a, a capital been... M that has like a hooky bit on the bottom left. We have a capital M with a hooky bit. But yes, a... in M. That is what I said. <laughs> well, I thought you meant M like noodle. <laughs> I, I was thinking in like Nazradora, but you meant M like... <laughs> uh, what... Like Mazradora, correct? <laughs> <laughs> we have Mazradora, yes. Okay, uh, so we have, hold on, we have with four an symbols. eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Pip, I, uh, I, I just don't quite understand what... They don't have it. Wait, you, <laughs> said, <laughs> wait, you said you had like a like a a D, right? It is like a D, but like the the vertical bit does not touch on the top or the bottom. Yeah, it's, right. like, it's an I. It was our first symbol to press. Yes, so maybe. Oh, yeah, we have that one. S right. in a ball. <laughs> oh, we have that. It is actually correct. Oh, There's an S inside of the ball. <laughs> One, two, three, That's six. four, shit, that's too many. 
<laughs> oh, hold on, so we know they don't have the, the mirrored F. Uh, what about the, the hook with the eyebrow? Hook with an eyebrow. Wait, is the mirrored F upside down? <laughs> no, it is like a like a normal capital F uh -huh. scripture, but the horizontal Sorry. lines continue all the way through. All right, everything that we haven't gone through so far. So there's something, not counting the ones that we've already described to you. Uh, oh, hold on, something... no, there is one more symbol. Uh, it is like a a uh, upside like down an upside omega, down with omega the symbol. Yes. Uh, with it also upside has down a omega line. that has like a foot in it. <laughs> yes, yes, we have it. We have it. Wow. Well, okay, so we have two symbols that you do not. All right, and no just one double has. check. Your hook with an eyebrow. Uh, yes. Does it look like? Is there any other way you could describe it? Like, uh... uh it is like a backward seven with a horizontal line floating above it. An eyebrow. That would be the proverbial eyebrow, yes. No, no, we don't have it. Uh, okay. Uh, and then let's perhaps go through our symbols. Maybe you have duplicates of ones that we had. Uh, it is like a backward C with like a vertical line through the bottom bit. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, then you have the noose. Uh, then it is. Uh... Um, just to clarify, <laughs> Pontifex just started to describe the symbols that are on the pillar. Yeah, yeah. This is now we're describing oh. the symbols that uh, so, that uh... we have in common on our own grid. Because we found that ones that you had, the one that you had in common with your own grid, the the D looking thing. Why don't you just describe all the ones that you have on the pillar? Uh, so the ones we have on the pillar is uh, is this backward C with a vertical line. This is way easier to talk and not do the pun effects. <laughs> so bear with. Uh, Pip, do you have any insight on what the fuck to call this? Okay. Oh. So the ones you were reading previously are from your grid, correct? Right. The, everything you've named so far is also on your grid. Yeah, everything that we've said is on the grid. All right. We we but, have all five of, of these our are symbols also on your pillar. Wait, say, say that again. But some of these are also on your pillar. Uh, yeah. So I've only done the grid. So now I'm gonna go through the symbols that are on our pillar. So okay. the first symbol is the backward C with the vertical line through the bottom bit. Then the next symbol is the noose, the hangman uh, thing, uh. which is the one that you guys already said that you have. And yeah. then it's whatever Pip is going to describe this as. I have no idea. There's a circle on the bottom that goes up into sort of a five. We and got then... it. What? We have it. Yeah. How, how did you decipher this? You're a <laughs> <You're a> <laughs> <laughs> There's only one five. <laughs> uh, then the sailboat, right? Yeah, then the upside down sailboat. And, and then the uh, is. Uh, with an eye. Uh, no, the upside down sailboat. And... No, 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 broken the rib. Other. No, then it is like a, it is like a check broken mark. Rib. Yeah, or a, a check broken mark. rib. It is like a check mark. That's on your pillar. Uh, correct. That is on our pillar. It's like a check mark that also has like a horizontal bit at the bottom. What What was the uh, backward C with a, with an uppercase I? going through it. That was the first symbol on the pillar. What, why am I counting six symbols on your pillar? Uh, we have the backward C with the vertical thing, the hangman, the circle with the five, uh, then the sailboat, and then the check mark. All right. Right, but, what a, but the backward C, oh! This is, no, 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 this, this is, is our backward C. That's Wait, no, different. no, no. This so the backward one. C is number one, and then the hangman is number two, then the circle with the five thing is number three, then the sailboat is four, then the check mark is five. There's mm -hmm. been some confusion about the backward C. There are two symbols that look like the backward C. It is a backward C with a capital I through the bottom half of it. Okay. Uh, it is like impaling the bottom bit of the C. It was not this one. Okay. So we have all five symbols on your pillar. And I believe we have, uh, uh, maybe, uh, then what were the five on yours? You had a so, crooked J? Then Which the, number uh, is that? One. Okay, crooked J. 
and then we also had a uh, like a G. Uh, a G the, thing. The, for? the second one is the one that we first described as a backward C. It's it's more like a capital D where the left Got side it. is not quite complete. That's number yep. two. Number three is the watering can. Uh, the what? It's it looks oh. like a watering can. Bathtub uh, with an arm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it even yeah, has we have that. Drip coming out of the it has like a dot on the right. Okay, yes. Yeah. And then the the G with yep. the with the hat. Okay, and then and the then last the weird one. one with the the wishbone. The wishbone with a hat. Okay, we have all five of yours. All right, I think we just press all five that are on the other side, rather than trying to split them up like we did. Okay, this makes more sense. I will press all five of their symbols. As soon as Same you here. press the five symbols that are on the other room's side, your door that faces away from the one you went through opens. Like, like our side? Yeah, so when, when you press oh. these buttons, this door opens. Oh! Oh, and we have a door in the room, it opened. And, and we'll do the same. Same for you guys, this door is going to open. Are we together? You're not. Well, despite being in different worlds, uh, Brooke, we can't get back to our bodies. Well, I mean, all right. Um, I totally, sorry. Let me, let me, uh, let me, um, say it differently. Um, Antifex with the door open, you can say there's a hallway that takes a bit of a turn like this uh, and then continues forward. Uh, and similarly, on you guys' side, you can see a, a hallway that does a bit of a bit of a curve and then continues forward. And then at some point further it takes another turn and you presume that it goes back around like all the other ones you've you've been in so far. Uh, our door opened and there is a hallway and it bends towards uh, our right, towards where the room I am supposing you all are in. Mayhaps these hallways meet. I hope so. There is actually uh, if you if <laughs> This will be probably hard with my body, but if you are able to get our bodies, um, just carry them over, and we potentially meet up, we can come back to the world. Even though, seeing what has happened so far, it might be smart to save some time to keep someone in the dream world. Can't you just come around? They're not. We don't know that they're connected yet. Um, uh, Mr. Brook, uh, how much do you weigh? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. Uh, maybe a better question. <laughs> Telex, how much do you weigh again? Uh, 130 pounds. 130. Uh, Mr. Brook, would you suppose you weigh less than 370 pounds? <laughs> Let me see how much I said in kilo. Just the weight that you're carrying is over 100? Perfect. Professor, there's... Oh, damn. That's a lot. I, I mean... Oh, yeah, there's uh, all my equipment, too. Less than 370, you said? Probably. Right, or uh, your combined weight less than 500. One and of those, uh, hopefully. Your bulks generally, on average, weight over 250 pounds. Oh, well, then no. <laughs> we didn't know. you weigh over 500 pounds <laughs> to over 250 okay oh but under 370 oh yeah oh sorry yeah okay i am trying to establish <laughs> if the combined weight of the two of you is under 500 pounds uh, sure back where i'm from we use a different measuring system <laughs> or i get confused by your pound saying what <laughs> uh <laughs> is your D and D beyond in feet <laughs> or in meters? <laughs> My D and D beyond doesn't have the information. If that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at the race thing. If we're going to weigh between Yeah, it's fine. Two hundred fifty. Let's say it, it's enough. Whatever. We'll see if this works. Uh, Pontifex is gonna. If sure. no one else is have anything urgent, he's gonna spend the next. Ill, uh, 10 minutes and 6 seconds uh, casting a ritual. Oh wait, no, hold on. I think I actually can do these instantly. Hold on. Order of scribes. Uh, yeah. 
I think I think my wizard thing lets me do any ritual instantly, like for free, one time. Um, That's crazy. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Uh, he's gonna do that. When I cast a wizard spell as a ritual, I can use the normal casting time, and I regain the use when I finish the longest. Awesome. Uh, so he's gonna go back to the to the room and is going to ritual cast. Uh, uh what's it? Floating. Di uh, yeah, floating disc. Uh. He uh, like you know when he's he's doing this thing he like uh, like the little orb uh, has like a glowing bit on it and he like reaches his fingers and it goes through the glowing bit of the orb and he pulls out like a uh, a single droplet of like a silvery liquid uh, and drops it on the ground and it kind of makes some magical stuff happen and there's a uh, it's like a little disc of force. There's there's a little hitch, Professor. Uh, it sounds like you're doing something really cool in there, but. Uh... <laughs> In addition to weighing 130 pounds, my backpack also weighs 130 pounds. <laughs> oh, God! Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, our good friend uh, Tekka here can carry your skinny ass and I can carry the big boy. <laughs> or you can just throw my backpack on your uh, disc. That's yeah, sure, cool. whatever, yeah. Oh, All right. Oh. Or we can, you know, he can carry a backpack. It's probably easier to carry a pack than a dead weight. Tekka, you're, you're left wondering what in the world Talis is carrying with him. <laughs> Tekka, would you mind slumping these sacks of meat onto this disc of force, please? <laughs> Through the power of math. Uh, we, so I'm carrying Brooke. Brooks crap and Talix himself, but not his backpack, and they're floating on a uh, a plane of force. I think like a big part of Talix's weight might be his armor, which is currently yeah, on his body. Not, now that yeah, now that I've taken but off the armor like... and the, the climbing kit's outside too, which was pretty heavy. It is yeah. gonna be it's gonna okay. be more like a hundred. <laughs> okay. More like a hundred pounds. Fine, whatever. You... <laughs> we have your shit. We're moving <laughs> through the dungeon. Yeah, yeah. All right, you we love worked Brooke it out. And, yeah, and You're Alex on my and... magical little red wagon. Uh, and you, you make it through the the door uh, into the alleyway on the other side. Oh, goodness. I made a slide. Um, and so the, the two of you who are sleeping and the three plus uh, the rat war awake, walk into the hallway, and they sort of, like, look for each other. Um, but you don't see one another. Alright, does it... Alright, I wanna... Are we in a hallway that curves to the left? Yeah. I wanna go all the way to the end and see if I see the door that they would have come out of. You don't. Um, your, your alleyway just curves into this direction. Into what direction? Uh, oh, so it goes left uh, and then forward. Well, thanks for carrying us, but you might need to carry us a bit further. That is fine. I can do this for a uh, one hour. All right. Or and, uh, the be... disc magically follows me exactly twenty feet behind, and it can go up and down stairs, and even terrain slopes and all that. But it can't. Uh, it can't do an elevation change of ten feet or more. Other than that, they're just being floated behind us twenty feet. But but uh, if you go down the stairs, it, it's going to be fine. Yeah, it says it can go um, across <clears throat> uneven terrain, up or down stairs, or ah, slopes. Okay, okay. It can do all of that. It so just so the can't, uneven like, terrain jump. is only if it's okay. Sudden, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so you continue for now, separated um, through the hallway that uh, uh, goes around in a line and then turns and curves. And at this point, you um, <clears throat> you kind of got uh, uh, an idea for this, how this is going to work and you expect that you probably are going to pop up again in a room that would be directly beneath the one you were under. <clears throat> I need a moment to set this up. So everybody pick up your tokens and the two sleeping people need to pick up like the two versions of their tokens. And then you can just go on a quick five minute break while I set this up. Alright. <laughs> we we solved Alex. the puzzle. Talix is freaking out right now, thinking that he's never going to see his body again. Aww. <laughs> oh my god, this was a mistake. I shouldn't have trusted this strange magic. I'm going to be a book. I'm going to 
Professor, what do you know about these books? Am I going to turn into a book? I know that mistakes are not something to stress over. It shows that there is still room for improvement. There is uh, the ways to, to better yourself. This is exciting. This is wonderful news. I'm, I'm a dream thing. I don't know anything about what this is. Well, don't worry. I have your meat. You'll be <laughs> fine. If it helps or eases your mind in any way, Talix, I'm pretty sure from how it's been so far, oh, no. it would not make sense if we never met up again. It feels like this place was carefully constructed to go through these, I don't know, puzzles. In None different of these dimensions. rooms have required us to leave anyone behind thus far. I exactly. assume the trend will continue. <clears throat> uh, friends. Do we just, still have the five minutes? Just, yeah. Uh, yes. And I'm trying to clear the table, but it's uh, broken again. So uh, just keep in mind, I'm going to load the deeper save file. The only difference is going to be that Brooke is healed at full hit points, okay? From before. Sure. And it is also... Uh, it shouldn't book you out, but it's possible that perhaps uh, the volume will be loud again. All right. So I should do Dante's from the get-go, but it's like just using my whiteboard is a lot easier. Okay. Uh, we can begin. Brooke, uh, you are first. One of the shadowy figures uh, um, has be pretty much as soon as you stepped into the room over here. Um, oh yeah, position yourselves inside of the room, because um, this only happens when you're all inside. Uh, so on to... Uh, is in front of me. <laughs> on to this. Yeah, Brooke, you can put a Brooke ahead of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, the room has these... Uh, um, these candelabras on the... Uh, uh, two candelabras in the room. There's a bunch of rubble. Uh, these uh, shadowy figures... Uh, um, one of which has attacked you immediately as soon as you entered and just the overgrown grass and the and the glowing um inscription next to the exit uh brooke you are the first person to act can i read the inscription or would it take some time yeah to get in front of it okay e all right um, I guess... Oh, it doesn't have the movement counter. On the what I don't? Can I just exchange it with the... Uh, I think at this point it's fine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Can I walk past the stone, or is it like... No, I can't. Yeah, to get around. Um, so make sure you, like, plop down your mini. Uh, not not over there. If you zoom out a little bit, and instead of looking straight up, you're slightly on an angle, you should be see. You should be able to see the grid. Uh, I still don't um, see my movement counter. What? I think it's below the tiles. No, even out here, I don't see it. Oh, oh, maybe it's the fog of war gets in the way. All right, well, fun. you gotta learn to we count. Can count. Yeah, we can count. That's All fun. right, counting. God damn it. Um, oh yeah, good that you said that. Let's see, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Um. Question: It says when I want to. Use a blood maledict. It says after that that it's no action. So the blood curse basically. Does it mean I can do it whenever? Do you know the by any chance? What are you trying to use? Uh, it'll what tell you what action you need depending on which curse you're using. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Some of them are as a reaction, some of them are as a bonus action, some of them take a full action. Just depends on the curse. Oh yeah, you're right. Damn, you're so smart. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I would like to use the Curse of Binding on this Shade 1 thingy. Okay. And I would like to amplify it while I already have my sword out. Once again, slit the wrist, blood comes <laughs> out. 
And he yeah. has to make a strength saving throw. It's a shade 1z. Okay. Nine. Nine? Mm -hmm. um, it's a DC of 12. So that means he failed. And it also means that their speed is reduced to zero and they can't use reactions until the end of your turn. Since I want to amplify it, it lasts for one minute. And at the end of each of its turns, the creature can make another strength saving throw. Okay. Which one did you hit with that? The one Z. I take okay. three pieces of damage. This is good and I yep, then use my action to attack the shade 5tk okay. with my sword. Um, Nice. 24 hits. Alright. That's... Nope. Not this. 1d8. 1d4. Plus... Six. Um, I don't know which of those is a d4 and which is a d8. In what order did you put them in? I think I put the D8 first and the D4 second. Okay. So it is uh, eight points of slicing damage and three points of radiant damage. Okay. Fire to the Lizzie Lemon. Anything else on your turn? Mm, that's my turn. Okay. Did I happen to notice anything special happening from the radiant damage or uh, anything like that? How so? I don't know. I was just wondering if uh, radiant damage. Okay, never mind. Well, what uh, what does that mean? Like visually, that's up to to Burke. Well, no, I mostly I was wondering if they were weak to Radiant. <laughs> and I could see that, but uh it doesn't oh. matter. I see. Um That guy can't move. Yep. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Is he the um is it not the beginning the or end. end of his turns? Okay. That's the end. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Alright. So in order, whoop. Uh Pekka. You see one of these shades approaching, and uh, a Pontifex, you need to be into the room, I said. Onto the squares. Oh, my. <laughs> um, this creature uh, coming closer and uh, targeting uh, uh, Tekka. Uh, your armor class is 16 currently, yes? Yes. Okay. It strikes you. Um, four. 11 points of slashing damage. Woo! Okay! Um, from this distance, its limbs just kind of stretch forward. Um, and uh, they, they, they... The way uh, that it feels is sort of like... Uh, um... <laughs> Dennis. Um, your, your clothes and your skin just uh, uh, open up, almost like some kind of claws. Uh, uh, just hit you. And you, you begin to, to bleed. Uh, as for this one, the strength save... Is it a save or a check? It's a save. Okay. Five. So it's stuck there. Oh. Alright, and then we move on to Pontifex. Um, 
Just to, to clarify, the last time that we fought these, he uh, he tried to cast Toll the Dead and it just completely didn't work. Was it that because you they're immune to them. necrotic? Or is that I, I physically can't use spells on these things? No, it's because you couldn't see them. Okay, can we see them now? You can see them now, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, then uh, Pontifex is going to cast Bless on the three of us. Okay. What? <laughs> So uh, all of us can add a d4 to attack rolls and saving throws um, until I lose concentration. Um, and then... Uh, and do either of you have a ranged weapon that you can see a target with? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, whoever said mm -hmm, you get mm -hmm. to make an attack at an opportunity, because I'm, I'm an order cleric. Oh. So whenever I cast a beneficial spell on people... Um, they can make an attack. It's just one, but if it's if I buff multiple people, I pick which one. Well, so my you can make stones aren't magical right now. So I guess not. Tekka, if you have anything, be my guest. Otherwise, never mind. <sighs> Can't think of anything. Otherwise, no free attacks. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, and then, uh, let's see if I have anything. Um, I don't. Uh, so Pondiff, excuse me, and he's gonna, yoink, he's gonna get over here. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Okay. He's hiding from us. It's yeah. scary. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, Pip will reach down into his satchel where he keeps all of his stones, and he's going to turn three of them magical. This is me seeing which ones they are. All right. And then Pip hands out that same light blue one to you, Professor, and says, Professor, I know your goat magic doesn't do anything, so here. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and then uh, the other two stones in Pip's hand just begin to hover upwards, just right in front of Pip's face, hovering in place. And then they start circling Pip's head, and then Pip is going to catapult one of them towards the shade over here. Okay. All right, so that's going to be... Uh, it has to make a dexterity saving throw. Twelve. Uh, that fails. So I'll roll 48. Fifteen points. Damn. Mm. Wow! Yeah. With, uh, with one of my magic stones. And, uh... Oh. Yeah, Pip will just stay where he is, I think. <clears throat> right. Uh, next. We have a situation. What are they here. doing? <laughs> <laughs> Something suspicious. Tekka. Okay. Um, Tekka flinches back from the claw's impact and drops uh, Talix's backpack in the process <gasps> as it crashes to the ground. Uh, Tekka is clutching onto his wound and dashes over behind this rock. Uh, his hand against the stone of the of the sto uh, yeah to the side of the stones, and he is going to be trying to dodge any future attacks. Okay, this particular tile, um, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. 
So you okay. want to be on this one instead? Uh, yeah, if possible. That'd be yeah, great. I'm just going to lock you in place. <laughs> okay. Loop. You're dodging. Yeah. Okay. They uh, strike hard. Take care. As for the rest of you. Do I get an attack? Whoop! Oh, well, the floor is gone. Forget the floor. <laughs> Do I get an attack? Um. What for? For him moving out of engagement. Was he within your. Yes, yes, you do. Nice. Uh, you rolled with disadvantage. The attack was disadvantage? Yeah. Is it is it dark in here? No. It's an okay. eleven. Uh okay. Eleven is going to miss. Alright. Okay. Uh before we move on to Talix. Uh, this one will make an attempt to arm the person right in front of him, so that will be Tekka with disadvantage. That's a 9 to hit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alex! So... Can they I... look like they're running away from you. To, to where? Just behind that rock. Alright. Well, I'm a little confused as to what's going on, but I'm going to go up and try to help Brooke anyway. Um, 15... 25... So can I get a... Can I see from here? The inscription or the... The, the, the. shades. Okay. Because you are in front of uh, the... The inscription, but yes, you can see. Where, you can just well, where is the inscription? One. Right here, next to the door. Do you How see that glow? How long that take me to read it? On the wall. No. Um, I would rule it as an object in direction, so it's free. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a quick glance and see if anything catches my eye. Okay. Uh, can you just roll, do an investigation check? Because you'll be reading this on your own. Sure. Um. Twenty-two. Oh, okay. All right. So you can tell that there's two sentences here. In the first sentence, the words you translate successfully are um, "protect yourself." Those who violence. That's the first sentence. Uh, for the second sentence, peaceful. Okay, some words that you don't get, then peaceful ones. And the word path. I'm gonna say aloud. Wait, I'm not sure we should attack. Uh, don't attack those who aren't attacking you. I know it's crazy, but just try it. Uh, and I'm... So in that case, uh, I'm going to reach towards where I keep my pouch with my bit of amber. Uh, uh, is it there? Do I have my stuff? You have your stuff. Including that? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, I might just uh, cast... I'm, I think I'm just going to cast Bless on Broken myself. Nice. And, um... 
that is my action and unless i can like pull the door handle with a bonus action i think that's all i can do okay um well i, I would like to try just to know that it is locked okay, okay. that's it so next one of them approaches this one has already moved and we're back on top of the initiative with Brooke. So you saw we shouldn't attack these? Don't attack the ones that aren't aggressive to you. I think. Well, at oh, least one was very aggressive on our side. Let me... <sighs> All right. Then I hold my attack action in case they try to take us. Okay. And I think that's my turn. All right. Uh, okay. So moving on. Be right before Pontifex. So, um, this one is going to try to passes uh, does a 15 pass your your save brook yeah okay so this thing is gone but it's at the end of its turn okay pontifex uh which is the one of these shades that that hit tekka this one okay Yeah, uh, I guess um, none of them are hurt yet. Uh, yeah, Pontifex is going to... Um, wait, no, I can't hold a spell. Because I'm concentrating. Um, um, this one has been injured by Pip, if that's what you were saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, yeah, I'll, I'll cast uh, Toll the Dead on it. The, the goat bleat. Okay. <laughs> uh, DC 14 wisdom save. I have a total of eight. Okay, yeah, that is damage. Uh, 1d12. Big damage. Mm. Oh, um. That is exactly enough uh, to get it down. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're just the like, and then it just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Eh. If you have any magics of the goat, they seem the weak. weak? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> He's like surprised himself. Pontifex has never, up until this point, at any point in along his very long lifetime, ever like actually attacked something. <laughs> Ever. He's never done this, and even last combat, he still didn't. Um, and he he tried to, uh, and he flicked a stone that was no longer magical. Pontifex has <laughs> never once harmed another living thing or unliving oh, well. thing. So he's still the had first it. time. You've I think he surprised that line. himself. <laughs> oh, oh! It turns out this magic stuff is pretty useful. <laughs> There's no going back now. Uh, Brooke and Talix, you can see some shuffling and some movement from behind a rock, but um, nothing coming your way or nothing harming you. Pip. Oh, boy. Uh, well, Pip's not gonna... Pip will, will take the advice of, of, of Talix if, if he just sort of peeks around the corner. Does he see that either of these are like peering at him aggressively or something. <laughs> well, the, you can't really see any head or eyes. It's just sort of like this formless shape that keeps uh, that keeps uh, morphing in and out of existence. Uh, um, but none of them are approaching you. <clears throat> Pip's just going to grab the magic stone that was floating around his head and just load it into his slingshot and just hold it there. Um, holding his action if one of them attacks or does something. And we'll just stay right there. Okay. You guys see this? 
and then Tekka. Uh, Tekka has lowered himself to the ground, like back against uh, the stone, uh, and glances above Pip and Pontifex. <sighs> Your powers are strange, but has its uses. Well, well done. Um, and he's gonna grab like some straps of cloth um, from his bag and address the wound. Um, okay. You're just taking care of your wound while you're behind cover. Oh, 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 oh. Alright, there we go. Talix? I'm just gonna kind of like walk up with Brooke and say, I I think we need to go where they are. I think they're showing us the path. Uh, oh, come with me, please. Sure. Oh, you've 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 hurt yourself. <sighs> That's part of the fighting. It's, it's no biggie. Let's. Get out of here first. Well, yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll just kind of go up together however we can make that work. And I do move right after you, right? Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, sure. I'll move up to where right, I was here. Da, da, da. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, but yeah, I'll let you take the lead in front of me with the shades. But I'm kind of nervous. I'm going to let Brooke go in front of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it yeah, what's up? <clears throat> if it's my turn, I would. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Oh, oh, not, oh, not yet. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Pip and Tekka, and then mm. eventually Pontifex. You see, uh, just one of these shades just getting really, really close to you guys. Um, not striking you down, though. Bro uh, Brooke, it's your turn. <coughs> All right. I will go five, ten. 20. What do I see? Behind. Um, well, you see the shades that you saw earlier. Uh, and Pip, you see another one of these just getting like right next to you over here. <laughs> Pip, Pip's hand is just like shaking on the slingshot right now. <laughs> Can I still ready my action in case I'm getting attacked? Yeah. Or Tekka gets attacked and they're in my range? Yes, absolutely. I'm Tekka, but Talix. Alright, then I would do that. Okay, you're ready your attack in case uh, anything in here happens. Yep. And uh, sure enough, as soon as you have your back on it, uh, uh, this one comes right up to you. Um. So you get to strike it first, uh, as you see it. Uh, uh, no, the, the, the order would be that this one attacks you first, and then you take your reaction. Um, I don't think that a 14... not 14 does not hit you. Uh, nope. I, you, like, you hold up your shield and something hits it, so you know, you know what it tried to do. Oh, bro! Yep. It said we can attack those. Said to take us, right? Do it! <laughs> right. I oh. cower behind my shield once more. <laughs> you chose the wrong person to attack. Oh. 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 Yeah. And you're blessed? <clears throat> oh, yeah. What does that mean? Plus. Like, plus uh, well, it doesn't make a difference, but uh, uh, yeah, you could add uh, the four to your attack. Oh, there's the bless markers. You're all blessed. Wait, did Talix so bless first, as well? Yeah, yeah, I blessed. First, oh, okay. Okay, the second number I roll is uh, radiant. It's a D4. So, 11 normal, 3 radiant. Ooh. Okay. And, um... For convenience sake, since nothing is going to happen on this side, let's just go straight to Talix's turn and resolve this right. situation. 
I will shakily attempt to use Shalele with my stick. Shalele? Yeah, that's how I have seen it pronounced, so I'm just going with it. Shalele, yeah. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, well, yeah, attack with my now infused, almost kind of uh, living stick. Yep. And bless, it's a definitely a hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a DA plus three. Okay. Right, adding my spell casting. Uh, well, four <laughs> magical weapon bludgeoning damage. Um, the back to Brooke. All right, I would hit it again. I'll try at least. Oh, I didn't use the blast, or it it only once. Oh, I don't think I need it. No, you're still blessed. Forever, but yeah, we're yeah we're naturally blessed, so it's fine. Um, regardless of the damage you roll, uh, you will finish off this uh this okay. shade. My God! Damn. Yeah, yeah. That's quite some damage. Wow. Oh, you're so strong. It's nice for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that before, three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, you're so big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. And, uh, yeah, after you finish off this one, you turn back towards the others. And uh, um, as far as both groups can tell, there is just stillness so we're we seem to be all good on the side from what i read uh the peaceful ones have something to do with the path it might be might be leading the way maybe we just follow them are you all good over there uh, they're like staring at us right Looks like they're looking away from us right now. Oh, oh but then turn. Uh, ah! <laughs> Stand back. Stand back. I think we're okay, but uh, they're just eyeing us down. Talix, are you sure that we should look at this rock and not just go to the door? The door was locked. I tried. So these are these three also looking... In yeah. one direction. Um, they, these are looking at you. Well, uh, I'm going to have a look around. Now, yeah, see if you can make out any more words if you have something to read on that side. Pontifex is going to walk around and check the room. Okay. Do his best to ignore these things. Um, you're, you're hiding for that writing? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, Talix and Brooke, in the meanwhile, you're going to see one of these shades finally moving and backing away from you and towards the exit. Let's oh. follow it. Well, let's go. Do you want me to? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, go. I'll follow its Stip footsteps exactly. And uh, um, Tekka. Similarly, these begin to move. All right, boys, let's keep meta to a minimum. <laughs> <laughs> eh, eh, he's like looking over. Eh, do you mind? <laughs> could could you not? <laughs> Staring at the shades. <laughs> no. Tekka, All right. are you okay? Um, Tekka kind of uses his core staff for support back to his feet. No, no matter. Let's keep going. The tides will turn. We can't keep going yet. I have to get my rocks. <laughs> uh, uh, I must admit it is a little hard to focus on this with the shade standing right behind me. <laughs> uh, okay. Take a will go get his backpack before turning to Pontifex. Oh, also, um, my little magical disc is uh, 
I think, still following us. I don't think it requires a concentration. Yeah, um, this, this drawing I made over here was from uh, where the disc was. Um, so, okay. uh, Talix and Brooke, as uh, this shade leads you towards the door, uh, to your dismay, you see your own bodies just sort of floating into the room from the opposite side where the wall is just closed and then uh, stopping roughly over here? Almost 20 feet away from you. Our real bodies? Yeah? Wait, right, we see this through the door here? No, no, uh, do you see where I drew? Yeah, they came yeah. through the wall? Yeah, they came through from this, uh, from this direction. Is there an opening, or did they just go through no, the No, it looks closed. Uh. Okay, so an opening opened right where you nope. drew this area. No, 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 nothing opened. The bodies just came through. Like the wall wasn't real, almost. Uh... Do you guys still have our bodies over there? Yes, I have them on my floating disc. Are you uh, sure? Uh, I'm looking at them, it's hard not to notice. You're quite large. And heavy. What? Then what are we looking at over here? Uh, I yeah. assume that you are in a similar space as we. Just, you know, in some sort of dream realm or something. But so we I are imagine seeing you our can bodies. see yourselves. <sighs> you could see yourselves in your dream state before, yes? But it was... We were looking at our... Yeah, but... I think we're in the same room, Telix. Yes, I believe you are all in the same room as we are. We are just on two different planes. Alright, does that mean... Should... Should we... We should probably at least have some people stay in the dream world, right? It's probably if you best want to, for you. If you want to go back, Telex, you can do that, but... I think I do. I'm gonna Where? read this inscription anyways. He's gonna try. Okay. Before you go over, good job on your fighting. I did not expect you to be able to handle yourself so well. I, I know I didn't do much, but I, I appreciate it anyways. Well, you made your stick glow and hit it. <laughs> and well, it worked. Yeah, it's, uh, I hit it with a stick. <clears throat> you seem to be a very impressive warrior. <laughs> well, that's one of my skills, so thanks for noticing. <clears throat> All right, make sure. I don't know what I wanted to say. You can go <laughs> over to the other side. <laughs> yeah, just to confirm this, I suppose. <clears throat> yeah, I'll go to my body. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Pontifex, Tekka, and Pip, uh, each of you uh, busy with their own things. You see one of the shades approaching uh, Talix's body. And then touching it. Uh, oh my and then God. the shade Whoa. is gone. <laughs> and the Talix, you're, uh, you're awake. You see everybody except uh, uh, for Brooke, whose body is like right beneath you. You're kind of just sitting on top. This uh, could have room, been bad times. Yeah. <laughs> That's a <the> great. <laughs> looks identical. Um, to how you left it, except you've noticed that the, the two candelabras that were like on the opposite side of the entrance from you, they're gone. And there is instead two others on the opposite side. <laughs> That's brilliant. We really could have hurt each other. <laughs> Why didn't I hit someone? You hit Tekka. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So, do you want me to try to open the door? Is Pontifex just, like, still trying to decipher this thing? Uh, Pontifex, uh, um, putting together, especially now that Alex is here, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to pick you up, uh, with what he read earlier, um, what you guys put together is the first sentence, protect yourse yourself, uh, um, those who resort to violence, and the second sentence, uh, you can read, uh, um, peaceful ones light the path. 
Oh. We must light the pit. Uh, and he's going to turn his head to the candelabras. I believe we are to light these. Uh, Brooke, okay. is there candles on your side? We we had some, yeah. Yeah, there Brooke, are. Do you uh, have any way of way. igniting them? Sure. Oh, uh, I can access my inventory, right? In the dream world? Yeah. Taking out a tinder box. So, sorry, Jason. Here, are you able to see this now? Yes. Okay, there you go. I can also see this part, by the way, now. Oh, you can? Nah, well, only the corner where Talix is in. Weird. I thought I... Did I pick... Oh, I picked purple. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> oh, good. I'm taking out the tinderbox and lighting up. The standing... Hmm? You light these Pip, candles, there's five the of other them. One. Uh, you can see that there's it's another light. one that has fallen over uh, pretty much behind you into this corner. Oh. Did you talk to me or to who? To Brooke. Oh, then I'll go over there. And Brooke, put you it can see up. these uh, these shades that are all, that are all around. Oh, and there's a new one also um, that wasn't there before. Uh, it's just sort of popped up, uh, and they're all sort of distributing themselves across the room. Uh, and you can see uh, one approaching this corner and one approaching this corner. And similarly for the rest of the group, you see one, the remaining one, just going to this corner, and then that one. Sure, okay. I guess we light the candle. If Pip isn't able to, then and, I guess uh, I'll light both. The... Just for your information, there's another shade that appeared. Yes, I'm assuming these shades are meant to be uh, us. We we are the shades. Oh, I think, I think we've. Yeah. I didn't good realize that uh, Telex was so observant. When Austin could pointed like out that they all had the letters that matched your names, I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 is 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 one of you hurt? I... One of them scratched me. I... Uh, I can see to that. I do not have spell slots left, but I can apparently... Uh, use a feature where I use my channel divinity to refresh his spell slots? Yeah. So Artist I guess... Artist divine I, power. Yeah, I guess I can do that, and then... Uh, That will Yeah, I can regain a level one spell slot. So I can I can heal you, basically. I burn both of those. Is that cool? How does your power work? Uh it's well what do you know about Vakanoth? Little. Well, she's she's the mother of our world. We used to think the whole world, but uh, she's a, a great living being that's connected to everything. But uh, well, from here, I'm not as close to her as I'm used to. But I've got a piece of her. It's just uh. It's just a beautiful power that she's bestowed to everyone, and if you accept that connection, you can share it with others in this way. It's a beautiful thing. Don't... I promise it won't hurt you. I trust her power. Thank you. And I will lay on a hand, holding the amber in my hand, and heal for nine. Thank you. Looking much better. I am impressed by her power. Will you thank her? Absolutely. 
I'll take bow my nod. Say a little prayer of thanks. Meanwhile, as Pontifex and Pip and Brooke uh, uh, work together to light all the candelabras, um, the doors swing open on their own. Well, hopefully Door there are not two more side. of these. I believe it is time for us to go, friends. All right. Brooke, are you, you staying? Uh, um, you're staying asleep. Uh, for now, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. I talked over you, Pip. Sorry. It's okay. Um, Ta Talix. Oh, yes. Your backpack. I oh. dropped it in the, the fight. Oh, uh, well, it's understandable. There isn't too much in there that's fragile. I've I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing precious that's fragile. Don't worry. Good. Gotcha. Thank you very much for bringing it this far. Though I will immediately start to dig through it and look at all of the things that are glass and see if they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a glass bottle in there and like an empty one and then some other full ones. It's good. Okay. It's probably cushioned by the blanket. <laughs> Be grateful to your teacher. Carried something much more valuable. <gasps> My rock! Pip will run over <laughs> to the professor. <laughs> Give it back. Sure. Feel free to keep now. it. Hey, Thank he'll you. hold out the pebble. <laughs> Snatches it. Thank you, Professor, for carrying my body. Of course. It is, uh, you know, what I do. So, of the ones who are awake, uh, uh, which one of you is going to lead through the doorway? I'll bring up the rear to keep the disc with uh, our friend Brooke <laughs> present. <laughs> Oops. So, uh, in whatever case, Pontifex is in the back, uh, so that there's kind of a, a clean space between him and the disc. He doesn't want to just walk forward and trample people with it. Talix will open the door. Yeah, the, door is, the door has opened on its own. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Talix will go through the door. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I, I, I might be doing this unlocking but not opening up. And you can see again a uh, uh, staircase leading down the hallway, taking a turn. Oh. And uh, Brooke, the same thing, and you can see all, all these, uh, there is uh, four shades near you, uh, all crowded around you, and every once in a while they even pass through you, while the rest of the group just sees this one um, that is with you. Um, and uh, Brooke, you're also able to see your own body at any one point, uh, uh, just sort of floating around. <laughs> uh, hmm. And you know that it's like laying... Uh, on uh, the magic the Pontifex described, but you just you don't see anything other than a body just uh, spookily following around. Definitely Lame. something you need to get used to. You're telling me. And he's staring at the shade amidst, amongst <laughs> us. <laughs> and who is uh, who's leading again? Sorry. Talix. 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 Yeah, Talix, Talix. Okay. I'm, I'm leading my party. And yeah, yeah. he's leading his own party. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, as you go around, uh, uh, down the stairs, uh, uh, circling, uh, taking a left and another left and another left, uh, uh, you open the door, you move forward a little bit, and then both Brooke and Talix, uh, um, both of you perceiving yourselves next to a shade, uh, you stop suddenly. You hold out your arms to make sure that none of the, of the people behind you, for Brooke, there is no need for Talix, you hold back the rest of the group. Uh, um, as you look, you expected to see yet another square room uh, that matched the, the, the dimensions of all the ones you've seen so far. And you know for a fact that you've gone in circle again, you should be directly beneath the area you were in before. But in this one, you, there is no floor. There is no floor in this room, and you see no floor in the room below, and you see no floor in the one after, or the one after, or the one after. What you seem to be 
from your position, everything beneath you has just crumbled away. And you can see here and there, uh, with, especially with the help of Pontifex's uh, light, uh, um, that on various of the floors beneath you, there are remnants of ancient puzzles, such as broken levers and faded buttons, not too dissimilar from the ones you've encountered so far. Um, just here and there, hanging on the walls uh, in the drop before you, but none of it uh, uh, looks like it can just stop you from climbing down through the collapsed floors. Uh, in fact, someone else before you must have had the same thought, because there is an abandoned rope dangling at your feet. Uh, I'm just gonna hold the book. Uh, Mr. Jemuel, uh, do you recall this room? Or lack thereof? It's this incredible. rope you? It's incredible how deep this structure goes. Can you imagine how difficult this was? Oh, oh no. I believe our friend has a bit of a revelation. Oh. What's he saying? What's he saying? He's... He remembers. This is where something happened. Did you fall? There's a rope. He did fall. I don't suppose one of us remembered to fetch that harness. Um... Hold on for but a moment. Uh, Pontifex is going to go over to the shade and say, uh, uh, Brooke, how are you feeling? Uh, not different. As like a shade walks up to you, uh, Pontifex is <laughs> uh, don't resist this. And Pontifex is going to push the shade. Like push it, just like with his, with like his hand. Hopefully not like off a little, the, a little bit of the show. The no, no, no. Just like <laughs> seeing if, if, if interacting with the shade interacts with... We found the imposter. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, you can feel... Um, you can feel the push. Brooke. And Pontifex, you also feel some kind of resistance. You felt that, yes? Yeah, please. Don't do it any stronger. Hey, I... Would not be able to have a seven strength. <laughs> uh, run one more test, and Pontifex is going to go over to the floating disc and is going to like poke at his chest with his finger, uh, poke his actual body. Do you feel this, Brooke? You feel it? Yeah, I do. Hmm. Wait. Ah. Oh, sorry, I just finally realized why uh, my. My script kept breaking. Um, deleting all the text is what's breaking it. Mm. So um, whenever I was deleting Jamil's text, uh, uh, I was inadvertently breaking my world building uh, script over here on the table. Um, well, okay, no, it's good. Well. It's good that now I know what's doing it because it seemed totally random to be to me earlier. Um, so keep track of your hit points right now, all of you. Like put them on your D and D Beyond or something. I'm just going to reload the save file one more time, and from now on, I know what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Jamuel. <laughs> well? Yeah, Jamuel was breaking the world. Jamuel, did you uh? Do you know if we are to descend? Seems that's One the case. Second. Sure. Can you can you ask Jamil if um he can hear you? He can? Of course. Oh. Well, should I stay in this? Oh, wait. No, sorry. You're in the dream world. Then I might yeah. not forget. Maybe he can. He can. <laughs> he doesn't see the book. Um, 
So you guys would have to read out loud what the book is saying for him. Yeah, and Jamil um, can't hear him either. But as already. for, yeah, Jamil can't hear him either. So yes, you okay, do have yeah. to do like... But like, let's assume, like we can skip that part. We, let's assume that you're yeah. reading out loud for him and uh, anything and he has the book. Yeah, you, you, you're translating. So go ahead. What do you want to ask? Um, do you remember if you need someone in the dream world or can I come back? Like, I'm confident in climbing, but it's always better to have. He claims you can return. All right. And I immediately... There are no more puzzles, he claims. <laughs> I immediately go to my body and touch it. Wake up slowly. Mm -hmm. You're Sit all up. together. Well, that's good to know. Then I will, uh, I will, I guess, turn off the floating disc. Okay, well, this is, seems, uh, he'll, like, peer over the edge. It's, like, deep, deep, right? Like, way mm -hmm. more than, than lights. Well, I'm going to just to load the a previous uh, save uh, one more time. <clears throat> that is a relatively far distance. Have we, you left, all... we left the harness, right? Well, it, do you all trust me at this point? Before you do this, Professor, I would like to try one thing. Sure. I'd like to go in my backpack and pull out <laughs> a candle and light it and drop it down. It's You're chance dropping it might a go candle. Out. I know, there's a chance it might go out, but hopefully we can at least get some glimpse of how far down it goes. Okay. Uh, it falls and it falls and it falls. So you feel like you are about uh, uh, somewhere between about 60 and 100 feet up. Do we? So we see you the ground You still see it, hits? yeah. Yep. It oh, bounces boy. off of a few like uh, bits of floor here and there. There's like this one spot where you can go like all the way down. Uh, but if you were to pick like, if you were to climb a little bit and then put a rope somewhere else and climb a little bit, you could like every once in a while step on pieces of floor, but that just seems like it would be, um, like you'd be trusting that that floor to hold you up. Um, the rope that you're seeing goes all the way down. Mm, I don't well, like this. Indy, who are willing to trust me, you are free to take the safe expressway down, but uh, if you would rather entrust your life to the rope, uh, it is your prerogative. Do we have to go down there? If we want to figure out... I mean, no one is here to make you do anything, but I had assumed you had come this far with some sort of goal in mind. Do not know your motivations, but they are enough for you to not flee thus far. What is a... a pit? Now hold on. <clears throat> I may just be a rat, but, uh, now, didn't Jamuel go down there and then turn into a book? I mean, <clears throat> that sounds pretty scary. I can imagine Pep, worse fates. <laughs> Pep, if you'd like to stay back, you can. Um, maybe, maybe, uh... You know, if something goes wrong down there, you can make sure that uh, the rope's here for us to get back. It is uh, true. Right. You could always stay back, but in the event that you change your mind and wish to come with us, uh, I can only do this once. Mm. And then you are to... Well, you are to trust the rope. If you want to stay back, you should still have my handkerchief. I promise you, if you... make up your mind and come back down later... I promise you it won't break. Or Let me apart. talk with Squeak. Uh, Pip just like turns his head and and looks down at this rat on his shoulder. And you don't hear any words exchanged between them, but they have sort of a private conversation. Um, and then Squeak finally says after like 20 seconds, All right, <clears throat> here's what I can do. How about <laughs> I go down there and take a look? And then, uh, if it's a little too scary, I'll let you know. Are you, are you good at climbing ropes? 
I have my ways. All right. And uh, as Squeak says that, he just sort of shimmers and turns invisible. And then Winter, while Squeak is invisible, Squeak will turn into his natural form mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> with a flying speed. Mm -hmm. Oh, fairy! We'll go down and take a look. Okay. Uh, is there a limit uh, beyond which the two of you can communicate? Can Not with my invocation. All right. Okay. Uh, so, Squeak flies down towards the very bottom where the where the candle is, um, and uh, he passes floor after floor of just remnants of more and more puzzles and every once in a while he even sees like something moving in a, in, a, in, a, in a corner of his vision perhaps some remnants of other shadows and shades that are just uh, meant to be obstacles in your natural path downward but nothing bothers him as he just goes floor by floor by floor downward and downward until um, he lands next to the candle and uh, notices uh, uh, in, in the candlelight uh, one particular rubble, um, just dirt and stones and pebbles uh, just uh, having fallen from uh, who knows how far up and uh, between in that rubble and above that, that rubble um, he spots bones just laying around here and there, and there is uh, um, some animals, there's some other rats uh, and some bugs just crawling and picking the bones clean, and when uh, um, when they all notice... Uh, uh, wait, no, they don't. They don't notice anything. No, they just keep on uh, munching. <laughs> okay. Mm, that's, that's the only movement that Squeak can see down here, bugs. Mm -hmm. There is okay. a big doorway. Um, on one side, but uh, besides the a way out of this room, like all the other ones before now, um, that's really all there is down here. Okay, Squeak will make his way back up, and eventually Pip feels a weight on his shoulder, and Squeak will turn back into a rat before turning back visible, and will just say, Ugh. Oh boy. I will look to Brook. Ladorian rats, you say? Do I know anything special about Ladarian rats? <laughs> I'm just referring to uh, what you've been, what Brook said last oh. session. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as you know, Brook, Ladarian rats cannot turn invisible, but perhaps it's something that Pip did. Huh. I well, assume they also can't talk, so... Yeah. I mean... <laughs> honestly... Assumption. Yeah. Alright, I listen. The, I guess they're in rats. <laughs> listen, it's a long way down. And down there... A lot of bones. Bones of animals, people, a whole jumbled mess of them. Bunch of bugs, and then... I saw this big door, and that's about it. We've established this is less than 600 feet in depth, yes? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like it's about 100 feet down. And I see no problem. All right, that's what we're here for. Professor, do you think those bones... It's only one way to find out. Hmm. It's no... I am a fan of hypotheses and theory and conjecture, but not when the answer is so easily attained. Then it is simply a waste of time. All right. Okay. All right, everyone. Get close so, to the professor. I promise this is safe. Anyone who wishes to ride the Pontifex Express? Come with me. And uh, oh. he will walk over to the edge, or rather hobble over to the edge. Um, he's uh, fairly important that you jump at the same time as me. 
Uh, everyone ready? <laughs> uh, Brock, maybe you should hold Pip. <laughs> Would that be better? If you feel better about that. Pip, you can see, is like visibly shaking. Um, nope. You know On what? Three. Wait, wait, wait. Take the handkerchief and bind yourself to my arm. Oh, I no, no worries. I assure you that if the spell falls onto one of you, you will surely drag the other one into certain <laughs> death. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I promise you, the binding is not only unnecessary, but is perhaps an added, uh, an added layer of caution. Uh, I see of danger, effects. Even. That is very tactful of you to say, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure this is more, or this is less about him not trusting in your um, magic. And this being a hundred feet deep. It's it's difficult to make a jump into a dark, scary pit. No. Oh, that is what he meant. Yes, uh, of course, it's terrifying and, and perilous and all of that, yes. <laughs> is, is everyone else all right? Take a just oh. nuts. Okay. I reach out my hand to Pip. Mm. You can also stay. Pip will take it. All right, I'll take the handkerchief and bind it around our arms together. Are the uh, preparations complete? Preparations complete, Professor. Okay, uh, we are jumping in uh, three and two and uh, uh, wait, hold on one moment. And uh, he's gonna like <laughs> check in his satchel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so gonna say, oh yeah, it would have been important. I can't forget this one. And he's gonna pull out a feather. <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> he had already like done a half a jump. <laughs> Anyways, uh, one. <laughs> he, he leaps. Huh? <laughs> so it's like panicked leap jumps after him. Um, and uh, he's not big on wasting time, so um, he's going to wait to cast Featherfall until we're, you know, relatively no! close. <laughs> we're taking the expressway. Professor, professor, professor. We're not jumping <laughs> Pip screams. <laughs> I, would, I would hold on to Pip's arm. So yeah, we, uh, we free fall for however far, like 100 feet or so, and then he'll, uh, you hear him shout something in some arcane language. Uh, if any of you uh, speak Draconic, um, you will hear him shout, uh, descend in Draconic, and his voice kind of echoes out, and everyone, uh, your fall is very quickly, um, slowed to a relatively comfortable pace, and you all land comfortably on your feet. <sighs> as soon as he reaches the bottom, Pip unbinds himself and goes up and punches Pontifex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pip, can you do a second one for me, please? Roll an attack roll. <laughs> <laughs> He's not trying to get out of the way. I mean, I guess most of, I guess my entire armor class is armor. It's not actually dexterity, so. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay, you take uh, negative two points of damage. <laughs> Minimum <healing>. is one. <laughs> what was that, Pontifex? What? Is this press way done? Uh, no. We jumped, I stopped our descent, we land, you're comfortable. Professor, that is comfortable. The jump was not comfortable at all. Please, the next time, even if it takes a little bit longer, cast whatever you did as soon as we jump. Oh. Yeah, I was not so concerned about the fall. I was much more concerned about the landing. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever perishes from falling. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I almost did. <laughs> Clutching his chest, Talix's. Uh, you are all young and spry. Your hearts will not give up for something so uh, <laughs> trivial. You're fine. <laughs> like, you know, give someone, whoever's the nearest person, like a firm pat on the back. Probably Brooke or Talix. Anyway, a uh, big door. And he'll like hold his Gandalf stick in the direction with the light still on it and illuminate Wait, the room. We should check the bones. Oh, yes, yes, I forget. I'm already crazy. Oh. Is anyone okay, else here? Uh, for a bit. Versed in anatomy? 
any medical experts here, or is it only uh, my minor studies? Pip will we'll take a look at the bones. Uh... Everyone is taking a look at the bones for a medicine check. Okay. Talix is like halfway in the fetal position. Halfway. <laughs> 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 He's on his oh, knees and elbows. I didn't mean to do minus two. <laughs> oh. It's actually seven. Okay. Seven eleven. Then we don't have a second, Dennis. The math needs to go in five minutes. <gasps> no. Yeah, Dennis! sorry, this is like the uh the, We're the gonna last stop, week like... where I'm, I have to kinda head out by four. But right. it won't be a thing in the future. We're going to cut off right before we go in the big cool door. Oh, man. But, uh, I totally have time for us to discover if this is uh, this is indeed our yeah, fleet-footed fun. friend. The world is yeah. ending, and Dennis is putting his clothes in the dryer. Well. That, that was what we said during Eberron. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. The world's not ending. This is, uh, is Tekka checking? No. Okay. Tekka's probably just walking. Actually, he's gonna pause by Talix for a second. Has oh. your, your teacher always been this difficult to trust? Oh, he's not untrustworthy. He's just a little... Uh... It's just different. He's, but he's a genius. He really is. It might take a bit of getting used to, but the same goes for everyone, right? He does not seem to understand people I... for his age. Sorry. <laughs> I just like tick up that counter. He's much more interested in the and learning about the world and. I'm kind of the same way, so I, I understand him in that way. I promise he's he's a good person. He just just give him a chance. And then I can see his ping going. Oh, that should be better. You hear us, Sid? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, did you? Sorry, did you uh, did you hear all of that that yeah. I said? I heard nothing of what you said. <laughs> okay. I also heard nothing of it, by the way. Oh, maybe I, I was also heard everything. Well all of body. Europe was lagging. Yeah, it's oh. probably the routing from Europe to the server. Yeah. So let's oh, run that again. I I kind of just stumbled and muttered through, saying basically, uh, he's more interested in learning about the world. That's why. He, isn't super uh, in tune with people on a social level. And it said, Talix said that he's kind of the same way. But uh, he's, he's a good person. You just got to give him a chance. I think, yeah. Ta Teka gives a quick nod uh, and kind of walks off exploring the room. Okay. Uh, for those examining the bones, so... Um, it's uh, obvious enough to, to both pon uh, Pontifex uh, and the Brook uh, um, that as you as you uncover some of the bones that have like fallen beneath the rubble, um, some of them belong to a humanoid, uh, a small one, and the the size of the skull kind of confirms it almost uh, almost uh, like the size of a child, but uh, with the pro proportions that are a little bit a little bit off. Uh, um, so it should uh, just about fit what uh, an adult halfling uh, would be like. And then uh, a few more bones that don't seem to be quite a part of it. And finding the skull does confirm that there's also the remains of a dog in here. No! Well, Mr. Oh. Fleetfoot, it seems that uh, this is where you met your untimely demise. Now the question remains of how you became uh, a tome. <laughs> Hopefully answers will reveal themselves on the other side of this ridiculous door. Oh no. The ink sort of moves and swirls around on the page, but it doesn't form any any new words. Should we take the bones? 
I mean, uh, is is burial like an important thing in the in the Vakanoth faith? Yes. Like ground burial. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, probably he is Plurnan, so I would only assume he's a Vakanoth believer. I should ask him what he wants us to do. Maybe we should take him, take his remains back to his home place. Wait, is he from Galtania? He is. Uh, you know that uh, Zvarda has the 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 honor of being the country that discovered uh, oh. uh, the Dari. Mm. He's from Zvarda. Okay. Well, he might wish to have his remains brought back home. Back in Vakan, that's so little, you know. Um, well, that is to assume there is an easy way out of here. I have an expressway down. I have no expressway back up. <laughs> oh, I was wondering the if you had a plan for that. Isn't the rope reaching down? Yeah, it is. It does. <laughs> okay. You believe I am to climb a rope? <laughs> um, do you think these old bones could support this body? I don't know. <laughs> uh... This armor oh. is more than just protective, it is supportive. <laughs> oh dear. Sure. Oh, you made us do nothing of the sort. We all came here itching to do this. I suppose there's one more question we should answer before we go. <sighs> Let's see what he's looking for. Um, Tekka is the first person to, to see this as he was looking around the area, but there is a, um, there are two panels, one on each side of the door, and all they have is each the, uh, sort of like the imprint, the silhouette of a hand. One a right hand and one a left hand. Hmm. I need everyone here. I'll muster the strength to pull myself back up and head over. I, uh, I do have to head out, so I'm going mm -hmm. to... Uh... It, Wand effects will follow Talix's lead if you guys continue to play. I, I think we'll. I yeah, think we we'll can. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to, sorry to cut things. It's okay. Well, it's this, this won't no be worries. a thing in the future. I'm yeah. Glad. <laughs> thank you for being here. Bye. Yeah. And thanks for running the game. Thanks for playing, guys. This is fantastic. I cannot wait till <laughs> next week to open the big door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of note: right. How many digits do these handprints have? Five. Okay. Pawn effects is of no help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have a good one. I'll see you all next week. Thank see you next that. week. And uh, thanks for tuning into the stream, everyone who's still watching. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Yep, indeed. All right, so we're going to stop right before you open a big door? Yeah, sounds good oh, to me. Oh, man. <laughs> cool. Uh, Pip, Pip is just like, he's crying a little bit next Aww. to the, the skeletal dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so sad. It is really sad. Forget Jamuel, the dog isn't stuck in a book, it's just dead. <laughs> that is true. You know that. Maybe the dog had its own phylactery. Oh, like it's a, got a notepad. <laughs> maybe it's in like a chew toy or something. <laughs> Of the remains, uh, um, the bones have been picked clean, uh, but they're still like clothes and um, some materials lying around. I Are we gonna well, loot Jamiel's corpse before we call it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Pip would try and get at least one token of Jamuel's stuff. Hmm. I would probably take his stuff um, because he wants to be buried. So might as well bring his stuff there. Okay. Yeah. Um, but since since Pip, you were uh, 
paying a lot of attention to to the remains of the dog, uh, especially once the skull was unearthed. Some some other bones are gonna be a little bit difficult to to distinguish whose they are, but like the skulls mm. are uh, like obviously very distinct. And just like right at the base of the dog's skull, you did find um, a collar, and it's uh, it's partially mangled. It looks like a lot of. Uh, um, like it was only only part of it was coming out from under the the rubble, um, so it's it's twisted. Uh, it had a couple of tags on it, but like they're so bent and scratched that you can't mm. really even read what they used to say, um, except for like one of them has. Uh, um, I'm gonna draw this in relation to you. All you see is this. So, um, and then there's like something past here, so it could be like a letter C, or perhaps a, con a continuation of a letter O, or mm -hmm. um, Q, uh, or perhaps some a symbol that just wasn't in a, in a, in a language that you could read. So, like, okay. just, just a half moon Yeah. Is okay. all you have. Pip will, will take that off of the dog and, and just keep it with him. And there isn't much to take the color off of. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you for being here. Was the the first part, uh, <laughs> the first puzzle? Um. I mean, what once we once we saw like the inscription that kind of explained it, it made more sense. And when you had to figure it out, like, you had each other's symbols, I was like, okay, they got it. But then you were skipping some, because you, you had some on your own uh, side. So you were yeah. describing those to each other. And then everything you were trying from that moment onward, you were always thinking of the symbols as the ones that you had and ones you didn't have. And I was like, I don't know how to get them out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we couldn't have done it without Squeak. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. No, I, I, I really liked that puzzle. Just, the, it was fun describing what the symbols looked like. I was like, hey, I'm gonna oh, steal this great. from, uh, yeah. keep talking. <laughs> and nobody explains. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, that's right, that's what it is. That was what I was thinking about. Yeah. But I hadn't played it in such a long time. Yeah, I, I knew it was ringing a bell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm going to let you go. Starting from next week, uh, um, Matt can stay for, with us for longer, so we can do slightly longer sessions, like like uh, last uh, last time that we did four hours. Nice, cool. eight hour sessions. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Eight hour sessions, I think, would go into four a.m. for me and Sid. Oh. Yeah, that'd be rough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, compromise at six. I would have done it for you. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> uh. All right, I guess we can drag it out. <laughs> Campaign's gonna take years. Jeez. <laughs> uh, why can't we all just do it in one session? <laughs> just play for a hundred and fifty hours. Is this coral on your uh, on your area, Sid? Uh, I don't know specifically what it is. Oh, okay. It's like some sort of exotic plant, like a lotus hmm. flower. It could be a cactus. Wait, that's not a lotus. Oh, what is um, that? I couldn't find a sea urchin, and so I was like, "This is the closest uh, thing I can find." Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Yeah, it's some yeah. some coral formation. Nice. Oh. Cool. That's great. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to close here the stream. So thank you for everyone uh, who's been with us uh, today. And uh, thank you for anyone who might be seeing this at a later time. And I hope you had fun. And we'll be back here again uh, next Sunday with the Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Woo! Thanks for watching. Thank you, everyone. See you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. See you next Sunday.